Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. Hello and welcome to the Pop Turnative Podcast, the podcast where we have digital discussions, the worlds of TV, film, pop culture, social media, sports, everything really depending on the guests. We talk about it all. As always, I'm your host, Peter Miliotis, and on social media, you know me as Petey Beats. And my guest is an actor. You'll recognize him recently on Netflix's new show, Lock and Key. We are with Jesse Camacho. Jesse, welcome to Pop Turnative. Thank you for having me, man. It's It's been a long time coming. I'm so happy to be here. I mean, I think this interview is at least... Three or four years in the making. It really has, and I finally got something that uh, that I get to come on here and push. You Absolutely, know, so I'm really excited about it for sure. Well, seriously, first off, congratulations so far of the uh, early reception of Lock and Key because it's been crazy. Yeah, it's it's been really kind of uh, overwhelming. It felt like while we were doing it, we were doing something special, but it's really been like a. a beyond my wildest expectations. It's been really amazing. Absolutely, and it's one of those things because you know. You're used to doing TV shows for a long time. Because a lot of people might not know, but you were leading Less Than Kind in Canada. Yeah. That was on yeah. City. So you're used to kind of doing that and doing different seasons. So I'm sure it was a learning experience for you as well because it was such a it, – it was a different type of show. But you you were used to that as well. Right. Well, there's I think there's a kind of a different approach with like – yeah, as you said, Less Than Kind. It was very much sort of centered around my character – that's still, I mean, the thing that I've done that's probably, you know, nearest and dearest to my heart was that show. It was incredible. Absolutely. Whereas Lock and Key, you know, the the Savini squad, as we're known on the show, it isn't in the comics. So when I got there, I was just kind of like, stay out of the way, you know, do your job, get out. But they were just so amazing and welcoming and lovely there that within an hour of being there, I felt like I was, you know, one of the main characters on the show because everyone was just so cool. So I definitely, it was a... It was a nice, familiar feeling that I hadn't had in a while, but, you know, I was definitely stepping in with some trepidation at first, uh, and it's just been it's just been incredible. But, uh, yeah, it was I'd almost forgotten what it was like to be part of a community like that. Absolutely. But luckily, they were so amazing, yeah. My, you know, I, I know the, the answer to this question, but my viewers might, but, like, when did you kind of just start when, – when did you kind of get started in, in storytelling? I mean, I know, you know, the Dawson theater – like, right. the Dawson stuff. We go right and, back, yeah. Absolutely. French class, man. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> it's true, yeah. Um, well, I – you know, my, my parents are both actors. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, my, my, my dad was uh, played uh, President Nixon in X-Men Days of Future Past. He's been on Arthur, which you and I have spoken about in the past. He played <laughs> Francine's father, the garbage man. That's his, that's his voice. And my mom has done a, a lot of film and, and TV as well. She's an amazing stage actress. She's a great film actress as well. Uh, it's and also in The Punisher, right? Yeah. One of the, <laughs> but, the second Punisher movie. It's true. Uh, but, um, you, you know, I wanted to act since I came out of the womb, essentially. When I was yeah. five years old, I was like, I want to do it. I want to do it. My parents were like, are you sure it's there's a lot of rejection there's you know it's not the easiest industry to be in but i could not be deterred and once i made that commitment yeah. they've been so supportive they're 100%. my biggest cheerleaders and now my sister's an actress as well so since i've been eight years old i've been you know acting professionally and trying to dip my toes into the writing as well so it's been fun and you've been in part you know uh... I'm one of the guys because I went to school with you. I kind of followed mm -hmm. your journey, right? Kept up. And you've been involved since you were like really young with really yeah. cool projects. I mean, you did 12 and Holding with Jeremy Renner. Yeah, oh yeah. Uh, right before. That was, I think, he had just shot SWAT. So that was right before he kind of really exploded. That was that, That's, that's a crazy guy. movie. Yeah, that's, that's a really kind of dark, uh, <laughs> twisted, you know, uh, like really kind of, uh, yeah, not, not, a, not necessarily a fun watch, but I, I was so proud of that movie. Still am. And Jeremy Renner, the nicest, coolest guy in the world. I haven't obviously seen him in years yeah, yeah. and years and years. But from what I've heard, he's exactly that same guy. So that was really, really cool. And of course, uh, um, a movie that got that got brought up a couple of weeks ago on my show, oh, Happy, no. Happy Slapping. Oh, yes, of course. Because Happy I just slapping. had I just had Tristan DeLala on the show. Oh, Tristan, he's awesome. And you've had Erica on as well. I have, I mean, yes. Who's really killing cool. it with Hallmark movies right now. Oh, my God, she's <laughs> slaying. Erica's still one of my very, very best friends. I see her several times a week. She's awesome. And yeah. Alex Harush, who's in that movie as well. Yep. Yeah, Happy Slapping was fun. You know, we shot that entire movie on iPhones. And yeah. since my character was the filmmaker, I did – you know, probably like I don't know, sixty to seventy percent of the the shooting on that, and that was that was really really cool. That was a hell of an experience. Oh no, for sure. And now, 
you know, moving, you're part of the Savini squad with yeah. some amazing actors and actresses. Yes. And I mean, you know, when I had Kevin Alvis on the show, he talked about it right off the bat. Like it was a family, like the cast and crew, everyone's still really good friends now. Was so That was just everyone kind of, you know, um, hit it off with each other. Right. Yeah. And I think, you know, Kevin said it, that it sounds like a cliche and it sounds like something people say all the time. But in, in this case, if you follow any of us on social media, we really were like a family. Like just last week I was in L.A. and myself, uh, Patrice, uh, Julia, Jones, like a bunch of us all went over to Amelia's to watch episodes of the show. But we ended up like throwing each other in the pool and just having that. so much fun. Yeah, I, I, I've never been like just treated so, so well. I mean, less than kind, I obviously was as well. But, you know, in, in that in that instance, I felt like I was the one welcoming people. And this one I was so warmly embraced and uh, really made to feel like as big a part of the show as Amelia, Connor, Darby, all those uh, amazing people. And it was really like a family. There was never a moment, as far as I'm aware, of any kind of tension or drama. It was the, the most lovely place to go to work. It was like going to a theme park every day. And it was exactly the kind of show that I love. So it was just a blast from start to finish. Yeah, absolutely. I really liked that. It was like working on a theme park. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, sorry, say that again. No, I, I like I like the whole comparison to like a theme park atmosphere. Yes, especially there's a, an episode in the season. I think I can talk about it now that it's out where we kind of get stuck in these caves and they start flooding and we've got to swim our way out. And my character is, you know, absolutely petrified. But I was having so much fun. Like <laughs> the only time I was bummed when the, was, was when they would say, OK, you're done for the day. Like I was like, let me get back in the water. Let, let's go again. It was just it was the most exciting place to go to work with. The greatest group, that group of people, man, we just adored each other. We still chat all the time. It's, it's, it's great. From an industry perspective, I find it very <laughs> interesting because for yourself, a lot of young and up and coming storytellers like yourself that, you know, are auditioning and being on these really cool shows and being in part of these big projects. Mm -hmm. um, there's so many, there's so much amazing content out there, but I can see that being good to showrunners and producers because for the promotion aspect of it, I mean, you look at Lock and Key and <laughs> a lot of the people on the show had other things they've done before that. You know what I mean? So, you know, it was like featuring a cast that was, you know, part of shows like previous <laughs> shows. And, you know, you have, you know, Griffin who was in a lot of amazing yeah. things. American and Bando and all that stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So you get to kind of use that. Have you ever thought about that? Like, yeah, I mean, I think it's a testament to like how well, yeah, they put this, this group together is that everyone, you know, kind of had a, a bit of a, a niche following. I'm not sure, and I hope my castmates aren't offended by this, but with the exception of maybe, actually, there's a couple. I was going to say Darby and Connor and Sherry, but there's a couple of them. You know, none of them were like massive, massive names, but a bunch of them had done, you know, these great things. Like, I mean, Amelia is skyrocketing, yeah. especially in Britain and now in America because she's just so freaking talented. Patrice was on, you know, Step Up. Griffin was on American Vandal. And I mean, he's been acting since he was, you know, a toddler as oh, well. Yeah. He's in that movie with Adam Sandler, Just Go With It. That's like yeah, one of the best movies. <laughs> he's so funny. Yeah, we, we uh, you know, so funny. Uh, Patrice and I didn't recognize him from that until like day three or four. And I remember it kind of, we're like, oh my God, of course. I, I, I'd known Griffin from a thousand other things, but I hadn't pieced that last thing together. Well, we all lost our minds. Like my family was watching the show. We all freaked out that Jackson is that that's uh, like, um, Georgie. Bodie, but that's Georgie from it. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm the biggest it fan. Like I, you know, was basically starstruck when I saw, when I saw Jackson for the first time and actually at the premiere in LA, the director from it, uh, a Andy was there and I got to meet him and he's a super nice guy. But yeah, Jackson's killing it, man. That kid, he's so talented, so nice. You'd think that when you get that level of success at such a young age that it would get to your head a little bit. Mm -hmm. That kid is – he's just a kid. He's the nicest guy. He was he was ripping up the dance floor at the premiere. Like he's the coolest, man. And yeah, Georgie from It. Like I, I freaked out when I saw that he was the lead of this. There's a lot of people that you don't know, want their big break and they want to be on like a Netflix show. And you're kind <laughs> of the example of like – Patience is a virtue, <laughs> right? Yeah, you know, I always say people ask me sometimes, you know, like, like, how do you survive in the industry and stuff? And I'm, I'm no expert. Like, you know, I'm, I'm a hardly, I'm hardly there. But to me, it's like, is that's something that my dad always says too? Is just keep your head down, keep doing good work, keep being you, and and eventually things will happen. And and that's been a motto of mine. And I've been really fortunate to have you know, some success with that. So I appreciate it. But yeah, it's just like, just keep my head down, you know, hopefully the show gets picked up for a second season. Yeah. Um, but you know, either way, like keep my head down and just keep doing, uh, keep doing work. 
we'll talk a little bit more about Long Q before that. I mean, you were part of the you were in the theater program, right? At at Dawson. Uh, I was in cinema communications. So yeah, we were gonna, okay. I yeah. was in. I was that was the one I was in. Yes, we, we had. I think we. I feel like it was more than French class. I think we had a couple classes together. I had to. I had to leave though, so I dropped out because of less than kind. So I was yes. only there for a couple months. Yes, uh, but I think yeah, Alex, yeah. Alex, and Erica were in our classes yeah. too. Uh, Alex and Erica were both in our classes. Wait, was Erica in our class? I thought she was younger, but yeah, uh, they, I think they, they they both were. Harush, uh, he he graduated. He did the whole thing, um, and uh, yeah, as I said, we're still we're still amazing friends. Yeah. But yeah, I had to, I had to leave because of uh, I did the two life. years, and then I moved to Ottawa. And I've been here since, so yeah. it's uh, one of those things. But uh, I I did find out though through Erica that a lot of the Hallmark stuff is filmed in Ottawa. It is. It is. <laughs> I mean, her one. She's uh, she's skating on the Rideau Canal. Yeah, uh, yeah, that was fun. We I, actually, we a bunch of us went over to her place to watch her movie, and we made a fun little drinking game out of it, and had a blast. She killed it. I mean, but Eric it's was- funny because she wasn't in. Because I, I, she even said she's like, if I would have known, like she wasn't in. They like she was, she wasn't living in Ottawa. They had her like. <laughs> Kind of, I think in Arm Prior, they had her somewhere else, like staying. So she yeah. wasn't sitting like in the city. Yeah, I remember her telling me that, like, she's like, yeah, they, they put me up a little, like, a little outside the city, you know. <laughs> but I mean, she's like, she's like, hey, they picked me up, so it's you know, it's it's not a problem. But I, I remember, yeah, I remember her telling me that. Absolutely. What's kind of the ideal project that you kind of want to work on? I mean, with Lock and Key was something that probably was. Something yeah, off the bucket list, you know what I mean? Like that's a cool project. I mean, you know, I'm not sucking up when I say it. I mean, it's it's absolutely right up there. I mean, you know, my favorite show the last couple of years has been Stranger Things, and so when uh, you know Lock and Key came along, I was like, oh my god, this is Netflix. This is very much kind of after that demographic. I think our show skews a little younger, which uh, which I really like, but it's it's really much in that window. So I mean, my dream would to be obviously would to just be to keep doing the show like that, but also like. You know, I've always said, because I, I love to act so much, I just want to be able to pay my rent, buy food, uh, and act. Uh, if, if you know, uh, if I had all my druthers, yeah, I'd love it to be always on a show like Lock and Key or Stranger Things. Um, but, you know, just the, I love being on a series because you can really build that community. So any project that gives me that opportunity, I'm so happy to have. I mean, beggars can't be choosers, no, especially when we're actors. That's why I'm so lucky to have something like Lock and Key. But I very much think that, it's this project that's really kind of my dream job. And, you know, hopefully, again, if the show is, is picked up, we'll get to see more of the Savini squad and the trouble they get into. But, um, yeah, it would just be to kind of keep going in, in, in this direction or show like it, you know. I think you saw my tweet where I kind of said that there's a little bit of a goosebumps, are you afraid of the oh, dark yeah, in there, absolutely. right? Do you, do you agree with that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. I think that, um, you know, uh, what's been great about the show is because the graphic novels are, they're, they're incredible. They're yeah. just so good. I read them in one sitting um, and I, I just loved it. Uh, but I think the tricky thing when you're adapting them, because those, they're very graphic, they're very gory, they're very dark. Uh, I think that to, to really do what would have been an absolutely true, like page for page adaptation, you could do that as a film or two. Uh, and this is just my opinion. Don't at me. <laughs> I, I, I'm wrong all the time. Uh, but I, when you're doing with like young kids on an ongoing show, I think you need to soften it a little bit because I'm just not sure people's like stomach could take it week after week if it was as gory as the graphic well, novels. The trailer was definitely like they didn't put the stuff in the tra- like the trailer made it mm-hmm. seem like it was a fun family. Yeah, and it, it is. But yeah. no, for sure. It, 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 what, what, what I thought they did so well, and this is all down to Meredith Avril and Carlton Hughes, who I think you know are just the best in the business. Uh, they, they like, how can we keep the same themes, the same kind of horror aspect, and also, like, widen it a little bit for a, a broader audience? And I thought that they did a, such an amazing job at that. I mean, you're never going to please everyone, but I thought they did an incredible job. That's why it's like, I, th- I really think you can show the show to anyone over, you know, I would say if you're under 12, it might be a bit much. But anywhere from that teenager to, you know, grandparents' age, I think everyone can find something in it to enjoy. Uh, which I think is just a real testament to them. No, for sure. Um, it's funny because, uh, you know, this show, like Pop Turta, features a lot of, you know, TV specifically. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you mentioned, you know, Stranger Things. And I remember when I was talking, when I had, you know, Randy Havens, who plays Mr. Yeah. Clark on the show, he was, talk- he was talking about, uh, you know, they did like these conventions when season mm-hmm. one came out. And the... <laughs> reception right away was mm-hmm. crazy and i yeah. kind of saw that with lock and key like you it got kind of po- posted and yeah. then instantaneously there was like 
fan clubs all over the world on social mm-hmm. media. Like it's it's already a global thing. Yeah, it's it's really phenomenal, and I think that's you know a real testament to Netflix. Like Netflix really really pushed the show. You know, I I've been uh, like a, a guest star and a part of shows where the network either doesn't have the budget or maybe necessarily not the faith to push the show as much as they could have. And that's definitely not the case with Lock and Key. When I was in LA, there was all these great billboards on Sunset Boulevard and it, it, it just felt really good. And it's a boost of confidence, I think, for the cast and crew as well to be like, the network is behind us. They're really pushing the show. And to get the reception we've had is, is, is really, really wonderful. So we're very optimistic, I think, and hopeful that the show will get a chance to continue. You never know, but... Uh, yeah, so far it's been it's been overwhelming, and I'm just so flattered. I did. It's pretty crazy too because you know Netflix. Netflix obviously is not the only streaming service out there right now. Right. Like it's 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 pretty crazy right now the amount of content out there for people to pick and choose. It's pretty nuts. Yeah, I think that the days of like you know there being kind of a a niche celebrity thing are kind of gone. I think yeah. that, that that generation's gone, and now you're just going to see this. There's thousands of shows out there, which I think is a, an amazing thing. I do miss the intimacy of it from before, but mm-hmm. at the same time, I think it's amazing that all these new people can create stuff and put it out there. I think it's such a wonderful thing. Another th- a hallmark on the show, too. No pun intended, Erica. Sorry, <laughs> hallmark. <laughs> I don't think I, she's offended. I think she's still- <laughs> no, but like the thing, the thing I always do on the show is, um, you know. I, I often ask about kind of behind the scenes misconceptions of the industry and everything. And I find it interesting because one of the kind of misconceptions is, you know, we grew up in Montreal, you know, hockey mm-hmm. was a huge thing for us. You okay. know what I mean? We grew up everything. And I remember, you know, when I met hockey players, you know, growing up, I was like, oh my God, like, yeah, of you're playing the perfect. NHL. Now I have a lot of friends that play in the NHL and it's just mm-hmm. like, you're a person. You know what I mean? Yeah. That I just chirp on Instagram. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. You're, you're, not the, you're not different than you were back then. You're just so is that a yeah. misconception that you still, I mean, people see you, Patrice Emilio, on social media, yeah. you know, you're people, you know what I mean? You're people in the public eye, but you're people. Oh, absolutely. You know, I, I you know, I, I struggle to pay my gas bill all the time. You know, all that stuff. Uh, when I, when, and it's funny enough, when I booked the show, I was literally sitting in my basement eating ramen noodles because I was like, you know, I'm money was a little tight, you know. So I like so when I booked the show, it was like a saving grace from God. But uh, uh, Amelia and Patric- I mean, the whole cast are literally the most down to earth people that you will ever meet in your entire life. Like I, being on this show hasn't changed them one iota. They're super kind, grounded, approachable, warm. Like, it's been great. I mean, you know, Halia Jones, one of my very, very dear friends. She's coming on the show tomorrow. Oh, she's amazing. Say hi for me. I will, for Uh, I I was just down in L.A. with her, and, like, you know, she's one of the other few. Kevin's another one who – and Asha as well, who live in Toronto. Uh, But, you know, we're the two that live downtown Toronto, Halia and I. So her and I have become, like, very, very best friends. And, like, she's someone who's seen since the show came out – much more than myself, someone who's kind of skyrocketed because she's, you know, a much larger part of the show. And she hasn't changed a bit either. She's the same sweet, uh, lovely, kind person that I knew before. And so I think like, you know, in terms of misconception, luckily on this show, you know, for the most part, everyone is kind of, everyone who appears kind is is kind. But I guess, yeah, I, I think that there is a misconception that when something like this comes along, your attitude drastically changes along with your life. Yep. And I just don't think that that's necessarily true. You know, I kind of like what you were saying. I mean, you're still that same person. I'm still the guy that we, we went to school together. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, so, yeah, I think the biggest misconception is that something, you know, in terms of who you are is going to drastically change. And I just don't think that that's true or it's not from what I've personally seen. I'm sure there are exceptions. No, absolutely. <laughs> what was kind of the coolest thing about being on Lock and Key? Was it kind of seeing the product after you finished? I feel like that's the coolest thing too. You film a show, you see yeah. the final product, you're like, wow, that's sick, right? That was, I mean, that was definitely something that was uh, really kind of rewarding when we all got to see it at the premiere. and We just all wanted to stand up at the end of the pilot and applaud because it was so much fun. Uh, but I mean, it kind of changed. Like when I first got the job, I was most excited to work with uh, Carlton and Meredith, the showrunners, because uh, Lost was my religion when I was in high school. I was oh, yeah. way too addicted to Lost. A lot of people and, were, man. That was yeah. nuts. I was, <laughs> yeah, I was a huge fanboy. And the year, bo- uh, the year before I got the show, uh, I said, you know, Stranger Things is my favorite show the last couple of years. That's true. But Haunting of Hill House was like probably my favorite anthology show at the time. And Meredith wrote that. So getting to work with Carlton and Meredith was definitely the thing that I was most first excited about and then it was to get on that cave set but you're right like 
it ended up being just seeing the show all come together because so many people like uh, Darby and, and, and Connor and, and, and Thomas and, and even Jackson, I only really got to briefly cross paths with. And a lot of the Savini squad stuff is kind of light and fun. And like, you know, I remember one day uh, Thomas and I were on set together at the school. Thomas plays uh, Sam Lesser on the show. And uh, he was like, oh, what are you guys shooting today? And I said, oh, we're shooting the scene where, you know, Kinsey showed us the poster and we're excited to have her back in the group. And then she agrees to go on a date with Scott. What are you shooting? He goes, I'm shooting the scene where I decide to murder the family. I was like, oh, okay. So, you know, it's like, this, these two contrasting things. And Thomas is like the, the nicest, funnest guy. I, I exaggerated the darkness of that statement to fit the story. But, you know, seeing all the different aspects of the show come together that I just kind of heard about or read about on the page was like so eye-opening in the funnest, greatest way. I mean, I didn't read any scripts after my character last appears. So the, the back half of the season was a roller coaster for me because I'd only gotten hints. And the final twist at the end of episode 10 was like mind blowing to me. I'm not there yet. Okay, I won't spoil it for you. So but there I'm is a there. twist. I think you might have spoiled something. I probably did. Just just now. Sorry. That's why if you look back at the playback, I'm kinda like, wait, what? Because I know okay. like Sam, I anyway, no, whatever. No, 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 <laughs> no. I, no, no, no. When I said decide, I meant that what you see in episode one. Like decide okay. to go. It's a flash. He, he doesn't kill the whole family. No, well, I mean, keep watching. <laughs> you never know. Oh, you, my you know, God. You never know. But to, no, I, meant, I meant in terms of when he decides to go and he gets into the altercation with the, the yeah, father. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. Like First 15 minutes of the pilot. That, that, There's yeah. a cool thing on Amelia's Instagram, I think, of like her, Jackson, and him like in the car. Oh yeah, I, like oh, and they're like that. They're dancing to jerking up with the Caesars. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Amelia's Amelia's a real. She's a freak, man. She's super talented. There's videos of her rapping and singing, and she's yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah she's she's really really talented and easy to scare. If you've checked out uh, today's thing, Patrice, make sure to check it. out Jesse Camacho's Instagram for that. Oh yeah, yeah. You'll see the it's the first. I think it's the first thing on my feed now of Patrice Jones just scaring Amelia every day, and she was such a trooper. She loved it. She laughed. Uh, but I remember the only the only way that we could not be a victim of his pranks was to agree to help him. Mm-hmm. So that was sort of the understanding. Luckily, Amelia was the target, so I managed to skip away from it. But she was – I mean, she's such a trooper. Like, Absolutely. Yeah. For sure. I do want to mention something kind of general about the film industry right now that's yes. a big topic. I mean, international cinema. I mean, yeah. you've seen Parasite. Yes, it's incredible. I mean, like, I don't yeah. – I haven't heard anyone say anything like – bad about a movie and i've never had that before i've had that one yeah. person who's like oh i liked it. you know everyone said yeah. it was incredible i think the worst review that i heard for it was it was excellent <laughs> that was the worst review. what well, was phenomenal i was so happy at one two because you know we were talking about how there's all this content out there and i think the greatest thing about that has been you know uh, voices from different cultures coming in and, and, and just different backgrounds and foreign films always been there but getting recognized like it did at the oscars happens far too rarely especially because those films are often spectacular parasites just one of them dude it was it was amazing and uh you know it it's one of those things where it this was an insane year for movies like kevin and i were talking about it like 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 1917 like you just look at that movie and it's just like like it's a technical marvel yeah it it really is and did you see jojo rabbit did you see it was it was was, that was i I love jojo (laughs) rabbit i love well, I love everything Taki Waitiki does. I mean, he's so good. Uh, I, yeah, I, I'm trying to think of a movie that I, I dislike this year. I mean, you know, uh, a little Did you see Uncut I, Gems? I did see Uncut I Gems. I love that movie. Adam Sandler was on fire. I would have nominated him for sure. I don't know who I would have cut from the Best Actor race because everyone was amazing. So the funny thing is it, it, <laughs> Uncut Gems is like it's just one of those movies that's just living on social media these days like yes. crazy. There's memes and gifs about it. You know what I mean? And one of yeah. the funny thing is – if there's like a song at the the end credits, basically, mm-hmm. there's a song like a techno song they play. Oh yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Towards the end when they go back, yeah, yeah. So then if you know, and the just the credits roll mm-hmm. right, and it just the song plays. So if you go and Google that song, it's by Gigi D'Agostino. <laughs> it's like an old, like the, it's an old Euro techno song. If you go in like the comments, it's all like uncut gems comments, and someone's like, right, someone wrote like, open the goddamn door. <laughs> It's. Just, I. I don't know if I've ever been closer to having an anxiety attack than in oh, that yeah. movie, and I mean that in the greatest way possible. Yeah, open the goddamn door, Howard. <laughs> I, I 
that, that movie was it was phenomenal. That even that sequence midway through when Kevin Garnett stuck in the door and he's like, "One second, I got yeah, it." And open like, the door. Yeah, yeah, it's so good. <laughs> and then it, it's like I I enjoyed Ford versus Ferrari. Um, I haven't seen that one yet. That was a good one. I hear it's good. Yeah, I gotta check it out. Um, uh, and the boy, the what, one of the young boys, I forget what his name is, but uh, he plays uh, in another movie I need to see called Honey Boy, which is oh, Shia LaBeouf's uh, life. I just saw that the other day at my buddy uh, Joey's place, uh, and that that movie was phenomenal. My buddy, I was with my buddy Joey and Katie Breyer, you might know from Dawson as well. Yeah, Katie. And, yeah, Katie's wonderful. Uh, I was at I was at their place and I watched it and that movie blew me away too. I mean Shia LaBeouf I think is just so talented and like that you know that movie you you watch like the, within twenty minutes I was like I feel like I understand this guy a lot better than I did. I highly recommend it. It's I haven't seen really it. Yet. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to watch it. Um, it it it's crazy to see how certain like movies like I, I'm sure there's some movies from like the eighties and the nineties that mm -hmm. didn't even have a chance. Like obviously a lot of movies from those come back cause of social media, but I'm sure right. like, can you imagine what social media would have been in those days? Sometimes like we would have seen more content in those days. Like I feel bad for those guys like 30 exactly. years ago. You know, I think that social media gets a lot of flack and in many cases justifiably, I'm not saying that it's been, you know, uh, the greatest thing in the world, but I think one of the wonderful things it has done is expose those kind of, you know, we talk about uncut gems, hidden gems from the past. These movies that were underappreciated or uh, underrated, uh, you know, it, it, they really get a chance to come back again. And I think that that's been crazy. I mean, look at all the, you know, the old movies that are getting, you know, new shows on Disney Plus or Netflix. That Mighty Ducks. That exactly. You know, uh, what's the one that um, they were talking about, that great movie that Ron Howard directed? I think it's Willow yeah. uh, from the, you know, I think it was the late 80s or – mid 80s anyway with warwick davis that yeah. that didn't do very well when it came out but through social media has had a resurgence and now they're getting a show and all these great things but dude what they, what they did with cobra kai on youtube yeah oh, i is, love cobra kai like i love that show it's so great <laughs> it's like, let's take the villain from an 80s movie and make him the lead of a show and it works perfectly well yeah. the thing is like they're they're doing like a mighty ducks disney plus show mm -hmm. and i read i don't know what like, the synopsis is pretty interesting eh I it's gonna be synopsis. like so it's gonna be the i think the son of a of, of gordon bobby gets cut by the mighty ducks oh i see okay who's like this big powerhouse team and they make right, like kind of a new team oh cool okay yeah, yeah. so that's awesome. I saw Emilio Estevez was coming back for it, and I was really excited. I, and, yeah, they, I they, and, and they, one of my favorite movies of the year, they casted Brady Noon, who was in Good Boys. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know, just like, and you know what, man? Like, Us, like Jordan Peele's last movie yeah. was, like, incredible. Like, such a good year for movies. Like, yeah. 2019 was up there, for sure. Yeah, the fact that you could make, you know, you could probably triple the list for Best Picture, yeah. and all of them are deserving. I mean, there are some years that are stronger than others, but this one was, like, a powerhouse year. Oh, yeah. It really was, and hopefully, it's it, that's the that's the trend of getting you know all these kind of different diverse voices coming forward because that's where I find we're getting the most kind of interesting and different stuff. And Parasite winning was like I feel like such a a great thing for that. No, absolutely. Well, Jesse, we will wrap up, man. Thank you so much for coming on the show, man. Thank you for having me, man. It's been a long time coming, and you know, let's uh, hopefully we'll get some exciting news soon, and we can do it again. No, absolutely. I mean, I got to say this to my viewers. I mean, like, I, I kind of got to know you. And, like, mm -hmm. you are seriously, man, one of the nicest guys, like, out there. <laughs> and I'm really happy that you're being, you're, you're being successful with all this stuff, man. You deserve it, dude. I appreciate it, man. And back at you, yeah, I really meant it. When I listened to you and Kevin talking, I was – it was just really – it really touched me. And, you know, I, I love Kevin. And I love you too, man. Like, it's, it's, it's really a pleasure. And hopefully, like – you know, something will bring us in person to the same city and we can uh, grab a drink or something soon. Oh, absolutely. Where, um, where can people follow you on social media to keep up to date with everything? Uh, I'm on Twitter. What's my name again on Twitter? I'll tell you right now. I have to look at my fist. It's so embarrassing. I think it's, <laughs> at, it's at Jesse115115 because that was my uh, homeroom in grade 11. And at, <laughs> on Instagram... I'm uh, Jesse J D Camacho. I don't know why. See that that's what that's the thing, right? Like I feel like stand up comedy these days mm -hmm. is stuff like that where people say things that they don't think is like it should be funny. 
and it works. Yeah. That I have. But, I, it's true though. I haven't changed it since I was in like grade eleven, and I was like, "What number do I put?" Because they kept going like Jesse thirty-seven eighty-two, and I was like, "That means nothing." So apparently, it's my homeroom from Westmont High. Like we have a friend in our group named Ryan Halpity, and yes, I'm I'm I'm, I'm, I'm calling him all on this because yeah. he has to become a stand-up comedian because he's just one of those guys that just his responses to certain things, yeah. just like he's not trying to be funny. But it just makes everyone laugh because it's so refreshing and funny mm-hmm. and, and clever and dynamic. You know what I mean? Yeah. Some people, it's like, you know, that's the direction I get in, in the room sometimes. They go, Jesse, stop trying to be funny. You're funny. Just stop trying to be funny. And you're like, I'm not. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Thank Seriously, you. Seriously, man. Congrats to you and the cast and crew of Lock and Key. We're hoping for a season two. Thanks, man. Yeah, me too. Fingers crossed. And we will we'll have you back on another time, man. Yeah, man. Absolutely. Anytime for you. Awesome. Well, this has been Pop Turn of YouTube.com slash Pop Turn for previous episodes. Please watch Jesse and the rest of the amazing cast and crew of Lock and Key now on Netflix. And until next time, this is Jesse Camacho and Petey Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Popternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.